The following being similar to real life events or people is purely coincidental. All names, dates, and locations are completely fictional. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the tales of Dr. Insomnia. If creepy stories of murder, monsters, and everything that goes bump in the night is your thing, well then, my friend, you are in for a real treat. If not, well, you've been warned to turn back now. So get settled, turn off the lights if you dare, cozy up, and get ready for a creepy tale of love gone wrong in The Cabin in the Woods. There is a dark cabin in the woods buried deep within north of Houston, Texas. It's a crude place with a wood fire stove, a small bed, and a small sitting area. Outside this cabin on the porch, there is an amazing view of a stream leading into the rapids. Behind the cabin a ways is a single highway road, and across that road is a restaurant bar with a half-broken neon sign the locals take part in. It makes this cabin a great getaway spot for relaxing as well as food and entertainment. This cabin has a secret, though. That secret is the reason no one has stepped foot in it for years now. Before we get into this dark secret, I would like to ask that you hit that like button and subscribe to my new and upcoming channel. It has been around a long time where I came from, but that is for another time, maybe. On a sunny afternoon in Valentine's Day 2001, a couple named David and Emily Hayes strolled hand in hand towards their car. Having just left their 10-year-old son at a friend's house in the suburban neighborhood of Houston, Texas, where they resided, David and Emily were thrilled about the upcoming weekend they had all to themselves. The anticipation was high, especially for Emily, as David had meticulously planned a surprise trip. Although Emily remained in the dark about the details, she noticed David spending countless hours on the phone in the weeks leading up to the weekend. Every time she tried to eavesdrop or inquire about the plans, David would quickly end the call or divert her attention. Post phone calls, Emily often caught glimpses of David scribbling notes in his journal, undoubtedly related to the mysterious trip. The only information David shared with Emily was a cryptic directive. Make sure you wear something nice. The secrecy only added to the excitement as the couple set off for a weekend filled with surprises in the vibrant city of Houston. When the couple reached their car, David slid into the driver's seat and Emily settled into the passenger seat. Almost instantly after starting the car, Emily turned to David and inquired, Are you finally going to tell me where we're going? David simply responded with a mischievous grin, Nope, it's a surprise. Emily let out an exaggerated sigh, displaying a theatrical sense of frustration. But deep down, she was genuinely excited. The thrill of not knowing the destination added an element of mystery to the adventure. Emily couldn't help but appreciate the effort David had put into planning the trip, and it warmed her heart to see him so dedicated to making her happy. This was a refreshing change, considering the recent turbulence in their relationship. As they drove through the scenic streets of Houston, Emily couldn't help but steal glances at David, who seemed to be enjoying the suspense he had created. The cityscape unfolded before them, and Emily couldn't shake the feeling that this weekend was going to be a turning point for them. Despite the initial secrecy, she found herself looking forward to the surprises that awaited them, appreciating the effort David had invested in rekindling the spark between them. Emily and Dave had been married happily for nine years, even though they were quite different from each other. Dave liked staying at home and was more on the quiet side, while Emily was the opposite. She was shy, but loved being around people. Surprisingly, it was their differences that initially brought them together. When Emily was in her early 20s, she dropped out of college. Her past experiences with guys she met at parties and bars started off well but often ended with her feeling heartbroken when the relationships didn't last. Dave was a big guy, super tall at six feet five inches, and he played rugby. Surprisingly, he was really gentle and kind. When Emily met him, she could tell he was special. He 
treated her with respect, was always loyal and cared a lot about her. They clicked right away, and Emily soon found out she was going to have a baby. Dave proposed, and without any doubt, Emily said yes. Their love helped Emily find stability in her life. After having their daughter, Emily went back to college and got a job as a registered nurse. Dave, the big rugby player, turned out to be an amazing dad. He'd stay at home, holding their tiny baby in his massive arms when Emily went to work. It was a funny sight. This huge guy with a little baby, like a big protector with a tiny treasure. These moments made Emily love Dave even more, not just for winning her heart, but for becoming a crucial part of their unique and fulfilling family. In the past year, Emily noticed Dave changing. He used to be shy, but could still go out and be social. Now, he doesn't want to leave the house at all. Dave won't go anywhere with Emily, avoiding her friends and family. He just stays home, watching TV or hanging out in his man cave. It's clear he's feeling down, but when Emily suggested therapy or couples counseling, Dave said no. This has been going on for about a year now. Emily had reached a point where she couldn't take it anymore. Her dissatisfaction had grown overwhelming. Convinced that Dave wouldn't change, she decided to confront the issue head on. Emily told Dave that she wanted a divorce, laying bare the depth of her unhappiness. This revelation hit Dave hard. He hadn't anticipated the gravity of Emily's feelings. Though aware of her discontent, he hadn't expected her to contemplate separation. Dave, in response, found himself emotionally unraveling. He pleaded with Emily, pouring out his emotions and begged her for another chance. Desperation filled his voice as he implored her to allow him the opportunity to prove that he could change and salvage their marriage. To David's surprise, in a moment of vulnerability, she relented and said, Okay. Thus, the reason for Dave coming up with this secret plan for a surprise Valentine's Day getaway. The idea was to kickstart a fresh and improved chapter in their marriage. Emily was super excited and hopeful about what lay ahead. After driving for about an hour and a half, Dave turned off the highway, following signs to North Houston's lovely Livingston area, a beautiful forested area about 70 miles away from where they lived. After a few more minutes of driving, Dave parked at the small, secluded cabin. He turned off the car, and a feeling of anticipation filled the air. The cabin, set in the scenic wooded cutout, held the promise of a romantic and revitalizing experience for the couple. He clapped his hands, turned to Emily, and said, Okay, we're here. And Emily looked from her husband out to the perfectly manicured cutout of the cabin, and she smiled and leapt out of the car excitedly. They took each other's hands and marched through the door with the provided code from the rental agency. As they entered, they eyed two glasses of champagne and strawberries. David really went all out, and David was told by the agency that this was the nicest cabin in the area, and he felt as he looked around, they had not exaggerated. They unloaded their things from the car and settled into the cabin. Dave clapped his hands and turned to Emily with a grin, saying, Okay, we're finally here. Emily, sharing in his excitement, glanced from her husband to the meticulously kept cabin, with a radiant smile spreading across her face. With an eager step, she moved towards David, kissed him, and said, It's perfect. Emily found herself enchanted. The rustic dwelling featured a central wood-fired stove, an inviting queen-size bed, and a quaint coffee table area. It was an idyllic setting. Amidst the charm, Emily noticed a card on the table that oddly resembled a wedding invitation. Perplexed, she looked at Dave, who smiled and encouraged her to investigate further. Reading the card, Emily discovered it was an invitation to a fake wedding, part of a romantic getaway package David had meticulously planned. The package not only included the delightful cabin, but also promised a professional dinner theater performance titled A Wedding to Die For, a murder mystery where the audience had to unravel the identity of the killer. This thoughtful gesture resonated deeply with Emily, showcasing how Dave had considered her love for outings and fun. After absorbing the contents of the card, she turned to Dave, who anxiously awaited her reaction. To his relief, 
Emily broke into a massive smile, hugged him tightly, and conveyed her excitement. The ensuing hours saw the couple by the warm fire in their cozy cabin, sharing stories, sipping champagne, and discussing the promising future ahead. As 7 p.m. approached, Dave and Emily adorned themselves in their finest attire and made their way to the local dinner theater. The setting, adorned with round tables, welcomed the audience to participate in the unfolding drama. Being the extrovert she was, Emily fully immersed herself in the performance, engaging with the actors and fellow guests. The play revolved around a rich baron groom coercing his bride into marriage, climaxing with the groom's dramatic collapse after sipping champagne. Despite Emily's enthusiasm, she couldn't help but notice Dave's distant and disinterested demeanor. Choosing not to spoil the evening, Emily suggested they head to the restaurant bar, grab a couple of drinks, and enjoy the night back at their cabin. Surprisingly, Dave agreed, and the couple returned hand in hand, sharing laughs and stories. Back in the cabin, Dave placed the beer they had purchased at the local store on the table, while Emily mentioned changing into something more comfortable. She entered the bedroom, shutting the door behind her, and Dave walked to the front door, turning the lock. Three hours later, one of the restaurant's guests, Gregory Thornton, heard rumors of a possible fire at a cabin. Urgency in the air, he and his brother rushed to the scene, discovering the cabin engulfed in black, oily smoke. As Gregory endeavored to rescue anyone inside, Emily, now back in the restaurant, feigned distress, expressing concern that her husband might be trapped. Gregory and his brother worked tirelessly to gain entry, ultimately discovering Dave's lifeless body with severe burns. Here is what later a police investigation unraveled. Dave immersed himself in phone calls and note-taking, orchestrating a profoundly significant plan. However, unbeknownst to him, Emily harbored a sinister agenda for the same weekend. While Dave was absorbed in his preparations, Emily discreetly entered the bedroom to change. As Dave headed to the front door and secured it, Emily emerged from the bedroom clad in something alluring. She cast a seductive smile at Dave, inviting him to join her in bed, expressing confidence that her strategy for reconnection was succeeding. Dave complied, settling into bed with anticipation. Emily retrieved an item from her bag, returning to the bed with a syringe in hand. Swiftly and unexpectedly, she thrust the syringe into Dave, administering a substance known as rocuronium. Drawing upon her role as a nurse, Emily had easy access to this muscle relaxing agent, commonly used during surgeries. However, in excessive doses, it could halt breathing. The drug's rapid onset meant that Dave would have witnessed the shocking moment his wife injected him, rendering him fully paralyzed yet painfully conscious. Unfazed, Emily placed the syringe aside and reached for a concealed gas can behind the cabin's curtain. With unnerving composure, she proceeded to douse Dave's face and chest with gasoline. One of Dave's last sights before succumbing to the effects was his wife callously flicking a lit cigarette onto him, igniting a gruesome end to his life. After lighting Dave on fire, Emily casually walked out the back door. She shut it, leaving it open just a crack, and then she made her way to the restaurant across the highway. She put on this big act about how her cabin was on fire and she thinks her husband was still inside, and Gregory overheard Emily say that her husband might be inside the cabin, which is when he and his brother jumped into action, ran to the cabin, and ultimately found Dave deceased inside the cabin. Ultimately, Emily never intended to give Dave a second chance in their marriage. She was already having an affair with a much younger man who was in the Navy, and she was just done with Dave. So as Dave began telling his friends and family, how he was going to make a huge effort to save his marriage. Emily was going around to her friends and openly talking about how she wanted to murder her husband, but nobody took her seriously. They thought she was just venting and being dramatic. But as soon as the news broke that Dave had died in the fire, and Emily had not people rush to the police to tell them pretty sure Emily had something to do with this. Emily received a conviction for her husband's murder, leading to a life sentence behind bars. The mystery of Dave's secrecy before the ill-fated trip 
unveiled a poignant truth. Dave had meticulously planned the getaway to be an extraordinary and romantic recreation of the couple's initial date. His efforts extended beyond mere logistics. Dave reached out to all of Emily's friends and family, gathering insights into her preferences and interests. The intention was to weave these aspects into the fabric of their trip, creating a personalized and memorable experience. Through his journal, Dave not only documented the trip's practical details, but also poured out his deep affection for Emily. Expressing boundless love and genuine excitement for their future together, Dave envisioned the journey as a catalyst for their reconciliation. His belief in the potential for rebuilding their relationship echoed through the pages of his journal, illuminating a hopeful path. Emily felt differently. Well now, isn't that interesting? Love may be eternal, but sometimes some flames well, they just seem to burn brighter than others. Until next time then, <laughs>